Hello everyone, my name is Mark Florence and I'm with the Southwest Technical College and Solar PV Outlaws. In this video we're going to talk about ground fault protection as required by the 2017 National Electrical Code related to solar PV systems. Let's get started. In 69042 of the 2017 National Electrical Code, it talks about the point of system grounding connection uh, for solar PV systems. It states that PV systems with a ground fault protective device as listed in 69041B must have any current carrying conductor to ground connection made by the ground fault protective device. So wherever you're connecting those current carrying conductors to ground if you have a grounded system, that connection has to be made at the ground fault protective device. Just remember that most PV systems will have that ground fault protective device located within the inverter. So if you take a look at this image right here, this is outlining and help us in, uh, helping us understand the ground fault current pass. So this is a representation of a solar PV systems or solar PV system. So right here, this uh, you can see the PV module or modules. This is our array. Here we have our conduit. Here we have the DC disconnect. We have our inverter right here. And then we have our DC grounding electrode and then our grounding electrode conductor right here. In a normal operating solar PV system, sunlight will be shining on our array. The photons will knock electrons off and the electrons will flow out of the negative side of the, of the module. They'll flow on the conductor, through any conduit, through the DC disconnect, uh, and through the inverter. And this is where we're changing from DC to AC, and then it flows out to the AC side, out onto the grid, comes back through the inverter, changes from AC to DC, goes through the DC disconnect, uh, through the conductors and the conduit, back up to the PV module on the positive side, gravitates through, goes back to the negative side, and it continues that cycle as long as the sun is up and the system is operating. That's how a normal PV system would operate. We have situations, though, where we could have a ground fault. There's two different ones that we could have. We could have a ground fault on the positive side right here, or we could have a ground fault on the negative side right here. So starting with the negative side, we could, uh, what would happen is, let's pretend that this conductor, the negative conductor coming out of the module, somewhere on the DC side, it is in contact with the conduit. Let's say it's at a junction box, and somehow that conductor's been frayed, and the, the copper or aluminum uh, within the conductor is touching the box or the conduit, and this conduit, you can see, uh, this dashed line right here is tied to the frame of the PV module, that metal frame. It's tied to, to all the metal equipment, the DC disconnect and the inverter, it's all tied together, and that's eventually tied to the earth. So that would make an unintentional contact uh, between an ungrounded conductor and, this, uh, and the earth, which is now called a ground fault. So electrons, when sunlight hits this, the electrons flow off, and they're flowing through the circuit, through the conductor, and they get to this point where it actually touches the conduit. Now keep in mind, electrons will continue to flow through the circuit normally. Uh, whenever we, uh, they take parallel paths, so it'll go, there's a misnomer when someone says that electrons take the path of least resistance. Uh, they do, but they take all paths. So they'll continue on in the normal circuit, but some electrons will then get on the surface of the conduit, that equipment grounding conductor, they'll flow off of that, They'll flow along the equipment grounding conductor back up to the inverter. They'll go along, and then they will flow through this item right here. This is uh, where we're making our, our connection between the uh, ungrounded conductor, uh, the negative, and the 
basically bonding that to or connecting that to the ground fault protective device to the earth. That's now a grounded conductor right there. And this is our fuse. So the electrons will flow through this fuse, back out through the circuit, back, out, uh, back through, up to the positive side. When enough current flows through this, which as you can see right here in this system, it could be a half of an amp to an amp. When more than, say, an amp flows through this one amp fuse, that fuse will blow, disconnect that connection between the negative, that grounded conductor, it now becomes ungrounded, and the inverter will shut down and electrons will stop flowing. So that's how, that's how a negative ground fault uh, would trip or blow that fuse. Now on the positive side, let's pretend we have our array right here, and let's say this, uh, the conductor, the positive conductor, somehow got pinched between the, the array and the racking, and when that was tightened down, it caused a ground fault on the positive side. So what would happen here uh, on this system is you'd have sunlight hit this, knock electrons off, and the electrons would flow through the circuit, through the conduit, through the disconnect, through the inverter. As I said before, some will flow out, flow back up to the positive side, and others, when it gets to the inverter, the connection, they will then flow through our ground fault protective device, that fuse. It will flow back along on the frame of the inverter, on the equipment grounding conductor, flow back up to the PV module here, flow around on the frame, uh, flow up to the frame, and, and then go back to this point on the positive side, hit here, gravitate through, and continue to flow. When enough electrons flow through, right here, when it flows through that fuse, and it blows that fuse, the inverter shuts down, electrons stop flowing, and th uh, the system uh, it will disconnect that, system won't be operating anymore, and it'll let you know that there's a ground fault. Now keep in mind, even though the inverter has stopped allowing current to flow, the system is shut down, there is still electrons that are available and they're on the equipment grounding conductors and anything metal. So you have to be careful when you do have a ground fault and the inverter lets you know that, you want to make sure that you don't become part of the path and you, you actually make a connection between your body and allows that, the current to continue to flow because then you can become part of that circuit and become electrocuted. So just keep in mind that even though the inverter shut down, lets you know there's a ground fault, even though electricity isn't flowing, the potential for fire has been reduced, there still is a potential for shock and electrocution, so you need to be careful about troubleshooting these systems. Thanks for joining me today. If you found this information to be useful and you'd like to either stay connected or be notified about future videos, please be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I hope to see you in the future. Thanks.